Michelle Visage. <laughs> RuPaul. Where did that come from? You know, I think I don't that, know. You know, I think that came from the first season of Drag Race. Uh, Chris McKim. Uh, I was like, I, I wasn't here. I know you weren't I here. I need to remind you. You were supposed to be here. But I you was. You weren't here. But um, we had a skit or something where we'd go, um, so and so, why you old geezer. Got it. And that's where that that thing came but from. But I feel like it didn't. you didn't do it with Merle. You didn't do it with Santino. It wasn't like you went, Santino. No, I know. I think it was, I think it was, it was Chris McKim, one of the producers on the show. It was Chris McKim, why you old geezer. So it had to have the right syllables the, and the right well the right cadence i can right. do it for anybody michelle Vasage. oh i right. get it is the same syllables that's what it? i mean you could, i guess you could do merle ginsburg but uh, it doesn't no, have the same no it doesn't have the same yeah yeah but um it's uh halloween's coming up my <laughs> yes the, it is the the, ho the holiday is it a holiday it is a holiday it, there's so it's crazy how it turned into a holiday because it was not meant to be a happy day but but i'll get into that you know, you, you know, I it's, just dried out. I know you hear it's, it? it did. It's my least favorite of the. I was gonna say I. I'll get into it in a minute, but yeah. you don't like All Hallows Eve and Halloween. I never even. I didn't even like it when I was a kid. Why? I love the candy. But <laughs> me too. I love the candy. I. But just, that's why people like it. You would. You do realize? No, they do, they like it because they get an opportunity to dress up and live their fantasy as a slutty nurse or a slutty. A construction worker, and we or, do or that a, every day, or a slutty, uh, you know, Whatever. meter maid, cat. Um, and I resented it even as a kid because I thought one day a year we get to dress up, just the one day a year. So you, I have a resentment, I, I, and you resent it because they're saying that you only get to be a freak and a weirdo on one day. Yes, ex exactly. Oh, that makes sense. So I, I'm like, no, bitch, that will be the only day I don't dress up. You know, right? So you're you're a rebel. I'm a you're rebel. A re you're a rebel, Dottie. I'm a bit of a, a beacon. You're a loner, Dottie. You're a rebel. Uh huh. And so that's I never like. And plus, you know, I don't like drunk people in masks who are letting their um their their. Uh, that means you hate New Year's Eve too. Oh, I hate yeah. New Year's Eve. Amateurs' night. I hate New Year's yeah. Eve. I mean, I'm gonna co-sign on that uh -huh. but I, i'm not going to co-sign on halloween but maybe because do you dress up once let's say you dressed up bitch do i look like i dress no, up you don't look i like dress, you dress up, up every damn day i know you do i ain't gonna put on a fucking cat's ears to make <laughs> dress up i dress up every damn day yeah and for me um i love the candy i uh, candy growing up in new jersey I have my mouth my hand in my mouth uh, please by do the way. your yeah. thing uh -huh. do whatever while i talk uh -huh. growing up in new jersey we had and it's it's called different things in different parts of the country and some parts of the country doesn't even have it but on in new jersey it was called mischief night really? and some places i think in the south it's called hell night come um, on so what they do is the night before halloween you take your eggs and my mother used to get so mad at me because eggs were never cheap so she used to limit limit me where some people had cool parents would give them a dozen, two dozen eggs. And you'd go around the neighborhood and you would egg the houses. That is ridiculous. Awful. You'd toilet paper the trees. You'd take um, shaving cream yeah. and wrap them. You're supposed to only wrap them with leaves because it's fall. So in New Jersey fall, the leaves were on the ground. Yeah. You make a leaf sh shaving cream snowball and you throw it at cars driving by. Like that it, is so stupid. A stupid, awful. Yeah. Uh, kids got worse because what happens is they started putting rocks in the middle of those snowballs, right. and then it got out of control. And right. by the way, wiping egg off of a car windshield or a house window is not easy because it dries. It dries. It, it'll wreck the paint. It'll if wreck it dries. the yeah. paint. Yeah. You are correct. So my mother started saying to me, "You're not. You can go out with your friends. You are not to partake in any of this." And th this doesn't go on anymore, does it? Um. That's a good question. I feel like it's faded over the years. Mm. I, I haven't lived in New Jersey in a long time, but it was really the thing to do. And then Halloween, um, I think I, to Wait, I told you. What does that have to do with Halloween? It's the day it's before. It's all Hallow's Eve. It's I the see. night before, right? Um, so, or, or Mischief Night is the night before, or Halloween is all Hallow's Eve, whatever. So I remember going trick or treating with my friends, and when they got to a certain age, they would all be the slutty cats. The cheerleaders with the skirts that barely cover right. their their bums and all those things. And I remember every year, and I, but I remember, and I talk about this when I do my shows because it's it was such an early memory of what a musical theater nerd I was because they all came out like whores, every last one of them. Which I love. I love too. Except for on Halloween. Correct. But it, we were young. 
So that was our opportunity to be like, but Ma, it's Halloween. Right, like, right, my right. vagina is going to show. So what? I'm a cat. Yeah, yeah, Meow. yeah, yeah. So I would come out dressed in a, a dumpy old gown with my Grandma Sally's mink stole. Mm-hmm. And they're like, I'm a slutty cat. I'm And they're like, what are you? I'm like, um... It's obvious I'm Miss Hannigan. Like, <laughs> nobody ever st- understood who I was. But early on, that memory of I was always like doing characters. A and, musical theater right. character. I'm, you know, who, whatever the situation was. Mrs. Lovett, whatever. And who's Mrs. Lovett? From, from Sweeney Todd. Of Cure. Of Cure. <laughs> which now they call them space buns, but back then it was her hair dip. Uh. But anyway, point is, I loved it because. I would go around, you'd see your friends, everybody in my neighborhood was out. Everybody had their pillowcases filled with candy. Mm. And I didn't live in a rich neighborhood. I lived actually the opposite of a rich neighborhood. What would that be? Lower middle class. It Mm. wasn't the hood, but it definitely was not even middle class. Right. It wasn't the Brewster Project. It it wasn't the Brewster Project. It was the Shoe Pack Project. Okay. It was a step up. Yeah. But you know, so everybody had their home. It wasn't an apartment. Yeah, in Atlanta, they had uh, their their Brewster projects was called Perry Homes. The Perry Homes. Perry Homes. It's the shoe pack homes. Mm-hmm. And my dad and I wrote about this in my book. My dad was so into it, and this this is why I think I love it. Besides being able to dress you up, you love in Halloween. Get, I love Halloween mm. and getting candy. My dad, Marty, who's still with us, yeah. Would, so we had a we had a ranch home with a stoop. You mean a ranch home? A ranch home with a stoop. Mm-hmm. And people in Brooklyn and New Jersey call it a stoop. I don't think they call it stoops anywhere else. That's like a front porch. Yeah. Right? You sit down on the stoop. We had a um, a thing with like a firewood holder. And you oh, put yeah. the firewood on yeah, it. You yeah, like yeah. a brass and it's round. Sure. And every year my dad would sit in his bathroom. We had a little window that would look out on the stoop. Mm-hmm. And in his master bathroom, master bathroom in a five- hundred square foot home yeah he'd look out and he could see the porch now he would rig it every year to make the carved pumpkin talk mm-hmm. to make the wood pile talk mm-hmm. and the kids would come up and, and the wood pile would go oh trick-or-treat you know happy halloween the kid would be like and the wood pile would talk to the kid and then move over here and the pumpkin would talk to the kid mm-hmm. he used he rigged it up through a little microphone that's fascinating. It was fascinating. <laughs> and he talked to the kids and they loved it. This is in a ghetto neighborhood, honey. Yeah, 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 yeah. And our house was the house to come to. Yeah. And he would do do little jokes like, watch out for the flying bat. And then you'd open the door and a baseball bat would come flying out. Yeah, I hate all of that. Yeah, I know. I hate it all. You know, my, I love it. Everybody, when I was a kid, we would go trip, trick-or-treating. Um, but my house was the house with all the lights off because my mother was like – you, I ain't paying for your candy. It, it's like, y- y'all better not come up on my yard. <laughs> and they knew me, Miss Charles, was not having it. The in lights San Diego. were off. Yep. The lights were off and don't come up in my yard. Ours was the opposite. But the lights off is a universal sign for don't bother. Uh-huh. Don't fuck with me. Right. And I'm very much to the thought process of this newer generation of kids are just showing up in like street clothes and like trick or treat. You're I'll, kidding I, they'll me. They'll come up to my door and I'll say, no. And they'll go, what? How say, old are they? Too old to be doing that. Mm-hmm. 18, 19. You're, you're kidding. I am me. not kidding you. And Do you not. give out candy every year? You give I good give out, candy? Yeah. You give I chocolate? I give full chocolate bars. Yeah, yeah. Full chocolate bars? I do the full Hershey bars. You're kidding me. No, bitch. I don't a play. full. Where do you get them? Costco? Yeah, Costco. Uh-huh. Yeah. A full chocolate bar. Full chocolate bar. I ain't giving no raisins or a penny. Yeah. How about you? You bust your ass, go all the way up to that house, yeah. knock on the door, trick or treat, and they give you a penny well, or you know, raisins. Nobody, nobody comes up to my house. Uh you know, ain't, there ain't no kids up there. No, that's what I was going to say. That's not a kid-friendly neighborhood. Yeah. Where I am, it's always kid-friendly. Look, once my kids are out, it ain't going to be kid-friendly. Yeah. But until then. I don't know. I just, I've always resented it. I always, I felt it was a sign of our culture's inability to accept uh eccentric characters and people who dance to the beat of their own drummer. And that they sanctioned this one day where you could do it and that was okay. And I resented that. I was I just, we talked about this before where if you tell me I can't do that, right. my I wanted to do it. That's because those are the people that we are and we find each other. We are the rebels who don't walk in the same path as normal society. Mm. And anything you tell us not to do, I grew up getting in trouble because I rebelled every time. It, it got to the point where Arlene had to use reverse psychology because she knew that I was going to do the opposite of what right. she told me to do. Right, right. And that's why we get along so well and that's why we understand each other. And you let your kids go out and trick or treat. Did you monitor their candy? Did you go through every piece of candy when they came home? Are you going to judge me if I say yes? 
Um, no, I'm not going to judge you at all. Because your kids, you did. Yeah. Because um, your kids, clearly, they didn't get poisoned or no, anything. No, and they're also my children, and they also, you know, there's a limit to how much they should have. So what we started doing when they got a little older is dentists in the neighborhood were like, if you bring your candy in, we'll give you something in return. Wait a minute. Some, if so, you bring in a whole Hershey bar. No, no. If you bring in, like, I'll pull out this amount of their candy, yeah. and I'll say, you can keep this. Let's give the rest to, to charity. Yes, to the dentist. A lot of dentists collect it so the kids don't eat the candy and they'll give them money or they'll give them a toy Wait or they'll a minute. give them does, something. I mean, does candy really cause um, – it only causes cavities yeah. if you don't brush your teeth. Okay. First of all, you know how many kids don't brush their teeth properly? I don't, no, I don't no, know. It's very difficult for a kid to learn how to brush their teeth properly. We as adults even don't even brush our teeth properly. The reason I brush my teeth properly now is I could take them out. No, just kidding. <laughs> Is because <laughs> just kidding. It's because I have a timer on my friggin' electric toothbrush that goes bleep. You know, each how long? How long you're you supposed brush? to do? I think like a minute per quadrant, or thirty seconds per quadrant. Your mouth is broken up in quadrants. One, two, three, four. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to do. I think it's thirty seconds per quadrant. I thought you were supposed to sing Happy Birthday. One of my that's for washing most, your hands. That's washing your hands. Yeah. Two times. Oh, you sing for washing your hands. Yeah. You sing "Happy Birthday" twice, Two times. which you know I've told you is my what my second most hated song. Happy birthday. Happy. What's uh, your number one most hated song? Is oh God. <laughs> now it's going to be in my head. It's La Bamba. How could you not like La Bamba? La Bamba. Oh. Oh. La Bamba. Se necesito una poca de gracia. I hate that song. Oh my God! I yeah. never knew that about you. Uh huh. I hate La Bamba. How? Yeah, it's rotten. Richie Valens. Uh huh. Uh -huh. I hate that song. Who got killed in a plane crash yes, with a big bopper? Yes, yes, yes. You're probably glad about that. No, 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 no. I had nothing against him. I just hate that song. And with whenever I have to sing Happy Birthday, I only sing the last part of it. So the, you um, can harmonize it? No, 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 no. The last thing. The Happy <laughs> Birthday to you. It's over? The end. <laughs> I think that's. I think that's all you Why should do. Why do you be hate it? I hate it because I hear it. All the time. That's because people have birthdays. Oh, you know what it is? You know I hate it? No. Because people sing it terribly. That's True. why. True. And whenever I hear it, it's sung off key. Do you hate the national anthem? No, I love it. Love the national anthem. You hear that all the time? Yeah. Uh, that's because when people, usually when people are singing it, there's someone who can really sing True. it well. True. Fair enough. Is, is leading And it. usually when you hear birthday, happy birthday, it's in a fucking office where nobody could sing. They're miserable that they even have to do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, They don't want to do it. So I don't, like, I don't like karaoke either because usually people who are singing oh, are bitch. off. You have no karaoke with me. Uh. Here, we're going to do karaoke in my house. You know, what? Yeah, you know I would love that, but yeah. usually whenever I've gone to a karaoke yeah, place, people sure. sound terrible. And my ears, it hurts my ears. Sensitive ears. I don't like it. No. You know. Please, but... you cannot sing Mariah Carey. Stop. Yeah, right, exactly. And that's what they always try to sing, Hero. Oh, dear. Yeah. Whitney. Oh my it's, it's goodness! It's always the same. I get so not not so emotional. They'll they'll sing "Greatest Love of All." Greatest Love of All, yeah. yeah. But um, uh, Halloween. Uh, so um, you, we were talking. I love it. You, I still love Halloween. You're talking about oh, you're, when you brush your teeth. I love brushing yes. my teeth. I love brushing. Oh, me my too. Teeth. And there's yeah. nothing feels better. Also, so, also, we've lived a long time, and I've had to pay a lot for these same. teeth. My Corvette that I talk about on every episode. Yeah, it's in my mouth. Uh huh. For sure. Yeah. Um, but because I didn't take care of my teeth the right way and because I am a sugar addict, mm -hmm. I've had extensive dental work done. But that's we're that's what we're talking about is does candy cause cavities? cavities? Yes. I don't think it does. Yes. I think the fact that people are not brushing their teeth is what causes sugar the sitting on your teeth. Yeah. And, and you, not being brushed right. But even if you brush right, sometimes it gets under the gums. Right. And that's what causes decay. Yes, sugar is a direct cause of decay. Okay. Sugar, even fructose, fruit sugar. What fruit did you juice, just call me? I called you fructose, uh -huh, bitch. Uh -huh. Fruit sugar, even uh, drinking, you know, like uh, a fruit juice. Yeah. Uh, even a fresh one that you get at Press Juicery. Sure. It's still sugar. Pure okay. sugar being thrown on your teeth. And so when you wake up in the morning, um, you, you you brush your teeth first thing in the morning. I pee and then, first thing. Okay. Then I brush my teeth. Then you brush your teeth, and then you will, and then you brush them before and you I'm go to bed. And I'm an avid flosser. I'm an avid flosser. Yeah. I floss, you know. Those sticks changed my life. What, the the floss flosser sticks? sticks? Yeah. By who? Um. Well, Glide is the one that I like because I've had dental work, mm -hmm. so the veneers and stuff. Right, right. And my veneer story is not great because when I first got my veneers, you know, now people have like, Todrick has these beautiful, like all these people have these gorgeous teeth. 
He, but he didn't, he didn't need them. Todrick didn't need them. He said he did. Okay. He said he had little tiny teeth, and mm-hmm. he, you know, he had big gums that he got reduced. Oh. He tells it's very interesting, and the magic mm-hmm. that you can do with with um, aesthetic dentistry is amazing. Yeah. yeah. But I got mine done when I was in seduction, and I smoked cigarettes. Uh-huh. So what he did, they matched them because I don't have them on my bottom. Uh-huh. I only have them on the four teeth in the front. He matched them to the bottom teeth, and you can't whiten veneers. I didn't have the foresight to think, oh, I'm going to quit smoking next but year. But you had the foreskin. I always had the foreskin. Yeah. Just not the foresight. Uh-huh. <laughs> so then I now they're, like, not as white as I want them. Right, But right. I'd have to get them taken off. You want done. those chiclet teeth that the people have in no, Hollywood? No, I'm happy with the size that I have. I just want them whiter. Yeah. But I can't whiten them unless I take them off and put them on. But, you know, my veneers, knock on wood, have lasted since 1990. Wow. They've, I've never come off. They've never cracked. So many people have problems with sure. the modern veneers. Yeah. That I feel like this is just the way it's going to be. My yeah. teeth are just going to be a little dingier. I, I got, you know, people always You don't talk. have veneers either. No, I, I have implants. Yeah, but not veneers. Yeah. And your fronts aren't implants. No, fronts my fronts are, are all the yeah. ones that grew out of my head. Do you whiten them? I don't. I you don't, don't whiten them. But uh, I, you know, the teeth in the back back here, the ones that I paid for, I wish I had not gotten them so white. Are they whiter than your fronts? They're whiter than my fronts. Yeah, but fronts. you can whiten your fronts. I can whiten my fronts, um, although my goal is to just replace all of the teeth. Uh, same. You know, just replace everything. Cosine. Get it all out of me. Lift the face. Yes. Pluck the teeth. Sure, you put a new roof on your house, don't you? Exactly. You know, yeah, why I agree. not? I agree. So, all right, we're going to go to a break. We'll be right back after this. Well, Michelle, I finally did it. What did you do? I got me a Casper mattress. What? I love it. I told you, girl. Oh I love it so much. I'm sleeping on two. You on two of them. I got my wave, which is what you have, uh-huh. on top of my other Casper mattress because I don't want to let it go. <laughs> so I'm like the princess and the pea, bitch. I got two Casper mattresses. See, I want everyone out there listening to enjoy the ju- the beauty yeah. of a Casper mattress. You know, everybody used to go into department stores or these these out these retailers. These mattress retailers. It's so 1996. It's so 20th century. Yes. Casper is the future. And not only that, it's a great product. Yeah, and here's the best part of it all, you guys. If we haven't sold the fact that it's the most incredible mattress yeah. out there, which I know at this point we have, we don't talk about anything that we don't love on this show, and we love the Casper mattress. But they're so confident themselves in the quality of their mattresses that they have a risk-free trial and return policy. You know they have that Rip Van Winkle return <laughs> policy. You could try sleeping on a Casper for 100 days with free delivery and painless returns. That's 100% risk-free. So honestly, what are you waiting for? Extra comfortable. And they're so com- they're so confident that you're going to love this is that there is a risk-free trial yeah, and Yeah, the one I just policy. talked about. Yes, exactly. The Rip Van Winkle the one. The Rip Van Winkle one is all about it. Child, you got to go to Casper right now, baby, and get that discount. $50 toward any mattress purchase right now. Go to Casper.com slash Rue. Use that offer code RU. Terms and conditions may apply, but trust me, you're going to love this. Casper.com slash RU. Get started today. today. <laughs> <laughs> we are back. One Halloween's coming up. It's at the end of this week, right? Yeah. yeah. I remember, even to this day, my kids, they still dress up. Lily doesn't as much because now is she, she dress. They don't dress up as slutty nurses, do they? No, they never wanted to. Like, what do they dress Lola up? Lola made her own costume two years ago. She was the girl from Finding Nemo, the girl with the braces, who was like, hush, hush, hush. so she made her own like night brace, mm. her own roller girl shirt. Like, she was really good. That's the other thing I just realized is that it gives people a chance to be clever, and I never think it's clever. That's the other part of Halloween that I don't like. Well, did you like the Roseanne Halloween specials? I remember them. I don't. Uh, no, I remember they happened. I don't remember what happened in them. I love people who go all out on Halloween. Yeah. I love it. But I appreciate that. Yeah. I appreciate it. Yeah. I just, I, I, I don't. You know, I have a problem with being sort of forced or society browbeaten into doing but a certain honey, thing. That's every holiday. But no, no. I love Easter. Do I you love. Like I love Christmas? Easter. I like Christmas. I don't do. I don't buy gifts. I don't do any of that stuff but i do enjoy christmas did I like, you buy gifts uh mother buy you gifts when you were older uh, no. sorry when you were younger no nope. you didn't have a tree we was po right but you could go outside and get a branch and put it up like charlotte brown no i think we we at one point we had one of those white frosted fake oh, trees those are my favorite. with the color wheel on it my favorite. yeah <laughs> is it your favorite? favorite you like store you like um grocery store cake yes 
and fake Christmas trees. I grew up in central New Jersey. Yeah. White trash is but my But you've traveled name. the world. Yes, and I can appreciate the beautiful things, but the things that touch my heart are the cheap things, maybe because I grew up with not a lot. Mm. And, and when I say not a lot, I mean my parents both worked and they fought for everything that we got, and I didn't go without mm-hmm. for the most part. I mean, when you look at a Kardashian world, I went without everything. Mm -hmm. But in my world, back when I grew up, I didn't want for much, really. Mm. You know, but our tree was store-bought. It was never fresh. And there's just something about a store-bought tree that makes me really happy. We have a store-bought tree. And I put it up every year. It's You know, I have one. You know, Tom Trujillo got one from my house. Tom is uh, Rue's friend. About, I think he got it for the house about five years ago. And I put it up that one year. Actually, he put it up that one year. It stayed up until about February 1st. <laughs> and, uh, and then after that, I put it in the garage. Never where to see it again? It sits today. Yeah. It's in the corner. I keep thinking, oh, I should probably throw this thing away. No, don't. Listen. It's, a, it's actually, it's a, it's a really good, it's a, it's a green fake tree. Yeah. And it's actually quite beautiful. I love the white ones. I love the blue ones. But my favorite one that we have, we put up a nine-footer every year because the girls- A real one. No. No, we've had the same one since the girls were young, mm. since we could have a high ceiling. And and we've lived in the past few places in the past six years that haven't been big. So mm-hmm. we couldn't have put it up. But in the home we're in now, we can put it up. But I, because when we were moving, we moved the week of Christmas. So everything was in the moving trucks. Mm-hmm. So I had to go ma- get a makeshift tree. I went to Walgreens. And got a tree that was on sale for like twenty five dollars. It came pre lit. Mm-hmm. It's five feet tall, so I it's shorter like the than way, me. I like the sound of that. You you take it out the box. Uh-huh. You don't got to put anything. You just stand it up. Yeah. And it plug it in. It's all lit. Clear. And I every year I vote for that one. Uh huh. I go. Let's just do the pre lit five footer. We could put trees Why around not? it. Why not? Why not? My husband and the girls are like, no, we want to oh, decorate. Want the ceremony yes, they want of... the whole thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They want this. I even got a little mini tree skirt. Like I got the whole uh-huh. thing. And nobody wants to play my game. Lola is an avid Christmas lover. Lives for it. Yeah. What so, is that about? No, she'll have Christmas all year round. She has mm-hmm. her Christmas. They have the room. We call it the Ho Room. Ho stands for hangout, not what you think uh-huh. it stands for. Uh-huh. And she has a Christmas tree up there all year long. All year long. She is a little. That that is her. Yeah. The opposite of Lily. Yeah. Lily does not give a shit. If Lily could work that night and make double money, that's what she wants uh-huh. to do. <laughs> Those are the different kids. Well, but uh, I, I've told this story before. You know, because of my background, I, I didn't celebrate the holidays, Christmas things, because I, I, you know, brought back awful memories. But as an adult, I re, I re-upped my Christmas, my uh, my attitude towards Christmas, and now I I dig it. I think it's cool. Tell I don't me buy about gifts. your love of Easter. I love the concept of Easter because it represents the resurrection, and I love the concept of of uh, a, a, you know whatever the symbolism of, of being crucified or having gone through something horrible and then a rebirth. A rebirth. I love that. So it's not really like everything revolves around candy for me. It's uh-huh. not really about like the Easter eggs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Or the, the chocolate bunnies. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. I pushed the Easter thing for a long time. To this day, my girls still ask us to hide the eggs. We hide them every year. And I remember Lily was five and Lola was three. And we were on a train in New Jersey that goes to like this little farm where you go on the Easter egg hunt. And Lily was a baby and she turned around and the Easter bunny came and gave the kids a chocolate egg or whatever. Uh-huh. And the Easter bunny walks away. She's looking at it with those eyes of a five-year-old. And I said, what, Lily? She goes, why does the Easter Bunny have a zipper down his back? <laughs> and I went, oh, shit, this kid is way too observant. Oh, my goodness. Lola was clueless. But I like the idea of the resurrection as well and the rebirth. But um, I also really loved egg, egg hunting. Yeah. Oh, I love it. And to see it through a child's eyes, I, I, I would stand there and watch them get their eggs and just well up with tears because uh. it's so – Cute. And I've told you this story before. I was five years old. It was Easter at my aunt's house. And she lived, talk about a 500-foot uh, house, um, square foot. Uh, there was one bathroom there. It was early in the day. And apparently, they had already hidden the eggs. All of my cousins and my father's sisters and brothers were there. It was probably 9 in the morning. And I remember um, 
I needed to use the restroom. And all the kids were waiting for them to say, okay, now you can find yes, the eggs. Yes, we had to wait. Yeah. Yes. Um, and I couldn't get in the bathroom. From, so my father said, listen, I'm going to take you around the side of the house so you could pee. Oh, right. Yeah. And of course, he took me and all the kids came. Oh, my God, he's showing him the eggs. So as I'm peeing, all the kids <laughs> surround me because they think I'm getting special treatment, special treatment for the Easter eggs. Well, you had different kind of Easter eggs. Yes. <laughs> And I was ruined. I was oh my God, were you mortified? a peace stigma for the rest of my oh, life. Oh, honey. When, you know, all the kids coming around me, whatever. More but importantly, did you get to find the eggs? I don't even remember. I, You know what? I never liked doing what everybody else was mm. doing. I never liked that stuff. And that's, that's, that's not a good thing. You know, um, you know, I say, oh, I'm a rebel. I don't like to. The truth is, I, I don't. I don't like to play well with others. Yeah. Not play well with others. I don't like to do what everyone else is doing. Right. If they're going that way, I want to go the opposite direction. I don't disagree with that for yeah. the most part. But there's certain things that are fun to do as a group. And I sure. think I liked trick-or-treating with my friends. I liked, you know, hanging out with them and doing stuff that everybody was doing. I, You know why I think I liked it? It was the opposite reason of why you didn't uh. want I liked it because I never felt like I fit in. I right. always felt like a weirdo, an outcast. And I, when I can do things or was invited to do things with him, I felt like I'm, I'm finally going to be popular. Like I'm finally going to yeah. fit in. So that was my moment. And then the next day was back to business as normal. And yeah. I wasn't wanted again. Yeah. I, I don't like pranks and I don't like people trying to scare me. I don't like that thing of somebody trying to do something to you unbeknownst to yourself. Did that happen to you? Um, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, where, you know, what you'd be, Trick or treating, and someone would jump out of the bushes, and I that did not thrill me. No, no, it still doesn't. I will punch a motherfucker uh -huh. if they do that. Even my kids, if they do it to me, I've been known to elbow hit punch. Oh, when they, they prank your kids, try to prank. Not you? anymore. They learn the hard way. Oh, but they try to scare you. You cannot tickle me. You cannot scare me. Mm -hmm. Growing up, um, I had a major fear. Uh, again, where I grew up in South Plainfield was not. I don't know what it's like today, but it wasn't the best neighborhood. Mm. And there were robberies all the time. And I was scared to death to sleep in my home. Every single time we went on vacation, which could have been, you know, a weekend down the shore, whatever mm -hmm. it was, there was a, a break-in attempt. And in your house? In my house. And I, we knew it because back then, you know, you could call the local police station. We call South Plainfield Police yeah. Station. And they can set up um, a burglar alarm. Because huh. we didn't have one. In our, we didn't have no ADT or whatever. A temporary burglar alarm. You could alarm. rent it. I didn't know that. Yeah. So my parents would rent it and it would be triggered, you know, by sensors. Yeah. Um, I'm sure it was some rudimentary shit, but you could rent it. Mm. And so we did when we went. And every time there was a burglary attempt and they tried to keep it from me every time. Mm. So I was a bad sleeper. I'd sleep at night with a blanket over my face. The only thing sticking out was my mouth. And uh -huh. I'm not kidding. Uh -huh. Every night I'd be calling... Or not calling, you know, I'd go in screaming for him. My father would have to go out back, turn the light on, turn it off. Nobody's out there. I heard somebody every yeah, night. Yeah. So I was home alone one night. I used to babysit my brother. That was the only way I made money. Uh -huh. My parents went somewhere every weekend with their group of friends yeah. from the adoption agency. They made a group of friends, and they mm -hmm. were always together on the weekends. Were they swingers? Uh, you would think, uh -huh. but I'm not sure. Yeah. And there was a whole eclectic group. Yes. And my Two best friends at the time, which were two girls that made me feel really unwelcome most of the time. <laughs> but they were very popular uh -huh. and very pretty. Oh. And I wanted to be like them. So I tried to be – look, at, like, I, I got a perm. Like, uh -huh. I'm pretty too. <laughs> Meanwhile, the perm fried off the top of my head. I look like an onion garden. Oh. They lost their virginity at 13 or 14. No boys would even look at me. Uh -huh. at the, right? But I wanted to fit in. And I know that people would say to her, why are you hanging out with that chick? Like, yeah. about me. But anyway, I was home alone, and I remember I heard somebody somebody starts banging on my window. My window, that my house was on a property that went like this, because mm, I'm slant. sure they got a deal on it. It yeah. was a slant. It wasn't two stories. It was still a ranch. Mm -hmm. But you would have to get like on somebody's shoulders or like a ladder to get my window. Yeah. I'm in my room watching TV, probably um, Love Boat or- Mork and Mindy. No, what came after Love Boat? Oh, Fantasy, Fantasy Island. Island. And then I'd wait and watch the Apollo. And then my parents would come home towards the end of Apollo, mm -hmm. banging on the window, freaking the fuck out. I go into the bathroom, <sighs> hyperventilating. Long story, really short. I crawl to my only phone, which was in the kitchen, mm -hmm. and I'm calling the police. The police come. My two best friends were pranking me, banging mm -hmm. on my windows, going, like screaming shit. I go into my backyard. The cops have a gun pointed at their Yes. Head. 
And, yes. and they said, don't fucking move. Uh-huh. They had stockings on their head. Yeah. And it was like a crime scene in my backyard. And I come out, I'm like, those are my friends. Don't shoot. Like it was a fucking scene. Wow. That right there is why I hate pranks. Pranks. Was that the end of the friendship? Um, the end of the friendship came a little bit after because um, – they were bu- they were bullying me. The boring mm. story. Yeah. Like this is what had happened. I didn't know how to bathe myself properly. Did I ever tell you this story? No. You didn't know how to bathe yourself properly. I didn't know like what, you how were to using... wash behind my ears. This is fifth grade. Yeah. Fifth grade. So what, I was like ten or eleven. Yeah, ten, I mean, eleven. Be, no, no. Fifth grade. It's, yeah. It's fourth nine. grade is ten years old. Okay. Fifth grade is eleven. So I was either ten or eleven because I was on the early side. Or were you fourteen? In I the fifth wish. Grade? I wish I could tell you I was fourteen. <laughs> I didn't. I obviously didn't know you scrub behind your ears. I took a shower. I washed my hair. I bathed my body. But I guess I didn't scrub behind my ears, and I'm so self conscious of it. I know now. you said that three times. What happened behind your ears? I was doing a penny drop. Do you know what a penny drop is? No. Uh-uh. Okay, we're out on the playground. Lanai. <laughs> Rue, I'm 11. There's no lanai at school. I'm not a golden girl. I go out to the playground, and there's like the jungle gym, and a penny drop is when you hang by your knees and you swing. Yes. And then you get off. And my friends were spotting me these two girls and I guess I had dirt behind my ears yeah. and they called everybody over and I was like, what's going on? And they're like pointing at me and whispering. And I was like, what? And then one girl was like, you're dirty. You have dirt behind your ears. They were all pointing at me and going, ew. Mm. From that day on, they, they would go in for lunch and make posters and stuff. And I'd say, I'm good. Can I come to you? And they go, no, they wouldn't let me play with them. They wouldn't let me draw with them. They called Why me dirty. Why didn't you use your telekinesis on them? I wish I could just do this and make them explode. Mm-hmm. I tried to be Carrie, but it wasn't happening. Mm. And at that moment, I realized things have changed. Because I, when I was younger, I was like the girl. Mm-hmm. And when I started to go through, you know, uh, turning into a, a older girl. Yeah. I still wasn't a tween. I was right. still a little girl. Um, that girls were mean and girls were not nice to me. And that's when I realized – Oh, this is where I'm going to have to be me Mm -hmm. and not give a shit. I told you, because then we went on to middle school, and I was really weird. And that's when I got into the Sex Pistols and got into the Go-Go's and punk rock and all that shit. And that's where I realized, fuck you. I'm an anarchist. I don't give a fuck. Uh I don't care. But I had to do that to cover up the hurt that I was feeling from not being um, invited. A penny drop. Okay. So, okay. There's How do you – By the way, do you wash behind my ears now? Okay. Um. Your knees are hanging. So your knees, here's the bar. Yes. Your knees, these are your knees. Yes, I know what it's like. Right, but I'm do ca- this. How one. do you get off of like that? Like this. One, two, two, three. And you flip. You flip. You flip. And your legs. And you move. land on your you feet. You land on your feet. You don't break your back. Correct. But I couldn't do it alone. So I had two friends spotting me. So uh-huh. they would take my hands. So when I let my feet go, I'd stand up right. Oh, my gosh. Another reason I don't want kids. <laughs> oh, get them older. No, it's- girls are brutal. Girls are I know, brutal. I know. I grew up with all girls, yeah. and I know what girls can be like. I just, uh, just the initiation of just that's what, what it uh, is. Oh God, that's a perfect word. Uh-huh. And no matter how hard you, and these for the kids out there who are going through, have gone through, no matter what you do, it's not going to be enough. Those people are not going to love you for who you are. <laughs> no, there's no so way. So you don't need them. You don't need them. Because even if I washed my ears, mm-hmm. they still wouldn't let me into their group. They were going to find no, something. No, they were looking for something. To yeah. exclude me on. Yeah. Now, we're, we're going to go to a break real quick, but did you were you able to prepare your daughters for that? For knowing what they were going to go through? Can I tell you girls? a story that happened last week? I know yeah. we have to take a break. I'll make it quick. Okay. Lily was in Cabaret recently. Yes. My friend from high school his w- grade school, I've known him forever. His name is Renato. Mm-hmm. His wife, Julia, is my vocal teacher, Julia Gregory. She's also my daughter's vocal ke- teacher, right? Out here in, Out here in California. California. They, you knew them Studio from City. New Jersey. I know the him, and I met mm-hmm. his wife through him. He's like, yeah. my wife's a great vocal teacher. You should try her. She's amazing. Mm. So um, they came as Lily's vocal coach and my friends mm-hmm. to see Lily. And we were talking about somebody who I had known that we went to school with from third, fourth, fifth grade who um, I saw that he had seen on Facebook. And he's mm-hmm. like, she wants to see you. And I was like, no, I'm cool. Mm-hmm. And he goes, she feels really bad. Apparently something happened when you were young. Mm. And I was like, it immediately came back to me. You know what that bitch, the you know what she did? The penny drop. She pointed at bitch, your I ears. I wish it was a penny drop. I yeah. went to a sleepover. Because I told you I had been pretty popular for a second. Uh-huh. Third, you know, uh-huh. all the boys wanted me in third grade. Uh-huh. Um, I went to a sleepover because that's what girls did. And we used to do seances. 
where we do two fingers under sure. a body and we'd um, try to bring back Jim Morrison and, you know, it was always the same people. Mm-hmm. Then we play Truth or Dare. Everybody got the fun dares. Everybody. They made me eat a piece of cat shit out of the litter box. Oh, great. They made me put my face in the toilet bowl. Mm-hmm. All the bad things. And I remember calling my mother and going, please come pick, in tears, please come pick me up. I don't ever want to do this again. So my mother had to come get me broken from this sleepover. And I never, ever wanted to see them again. So I knew, like, this is all fifth grade. All right? This is all the same time. Mm-hmm. And I know. He said, I said, what could she possibly? He said, she did some bad stuff to you when you were kids, and she feels awful and wants to apologize. She wants to eat a piece of cat poop in front of you. That would make a, me feel really, really yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. The it, shit is, people don't forget. They know what they do. Yeah. But they're either at one point going to take, you know, take control of it, or they're not. Yeah. And she wants to. I don't care at this point, obviously. But I thought it was really interesting that she remembered it. Oh, my goodness. Isn't that crazy? That is crazy. How many? 30 years later. Thir- is that all 30? 30 years later. She wants to apologize. Oh, my God. All right. We're going to go to a break. We'll be right back after this. Michelle, Zip Recruiter is the way folks be finding people to work for them. You know what? It's not easy because everybody, let's use an audition, for example. Okay. You walk in and every casting director, the new thing that they say is, we want you to be the person to get the job because yeah. we want to stop the job hunting here. Yeah. But it ain't easy to find that person. Right. But with ZipRecruiter, it is. You can push your jobs to 100-plus job sites with just one click. Then their powerful technology efficiently matches the right people to your job better than anyone else. That's and, of course, we're not really just talking about going for an audition for No, a we're talking about the real world jobs. Real child. world yeah. jobs. <laughs> That's why ZipRecruiter is different because unlike other job sites, ZipRecruiter doesn't depend on candidates finding you. It finds them. In fact, you guys, listen to this. We're about to give you some statistics. Okay. Over 80% of jobs posted on ZipRecruiter get a qualified candidate in just 24 hours. Wait a minute. In just one day? Yeah. That's what 24 hours is. Is that what 24 hours? Okay. (laughs) No judging or sorry, no juggling emails or calls to your office. Maybe some judging. Simply screen, rate, and manage candidates all in one place with ZipRecruiter's easy to use dashboard gotta love that find out today why zip recruiter has been used by businesses of all sizes to find the most qualified job candidates with immediate results and right now what's the tea listeners can post jobs on zip recruiter for free wait for free i said free that's four letters and it's an f word free just go to zip recruiter.com slash rue that's zip recruiter.com slash rue one more time one more time one more time for free <laughs> ziprecruiter.com slash r-e-u girl i'm loving that casper mattress that damn time <laughs> i do it's fantastic and you know everybody knows casper is an online retailer of premium mattresses at a fraction of the price you can also get fifty dollars toward any mattress purchase by visiting casper.com slash rue Girl, you got to use that offer code, are you? You know it. I'm telling you guys, we see you all on Twitter talking about our Casper mattresses and your Casper mattresses. It'll change your life. Get started today and get the $50 toward any mattress purchase, $50 off, uh, casper.com slash rue. Do it now, y'all. You know, uh, I don't know many people from back 30 years ago. Do you talk to anybody from the I have one friend who I've known since um, uh, 10th grade. Uh, who I'm friends with, and, you know, we still see each other. She lives in San Francisco. Her name is Micaiah. Oh, yeah. She's yeah. the one that you go to the hip-hop I festival. go to the, the International Hip-Hop Festival in San Francisco. Uh, Nothing every, earlier. You, what is that? Earlier in your life. No, no. And uh, the hip-hop festival in San Francisco, she does it at the, um, the Museum of Fine Arts in San Francisco, it's usually around my birthday, November 17th. So it's actually coming up. It's coming up in a it's few weeks. It's supposed to be great. Oh, my God. It is so fun. It is so much fun, Michelle. I know you Michelle. love it. I, I, love, I go every year. It's, um, the mu- it's, it's at the Theater of Fine Arts in San Francisco. Uh, I'll post something about it. Why did it. I think it was at a park? There is a park right there. And if you know the TV show, The Streets of San Francisco... <laughs> Which, of um, course, you no don't one, right. because you would have to be 60 years old right. to know what that is. <laughs> um, uh, they would show it, in, I think, in the opening credits. But it's a very, you know, it's one of the places, the beautiful locations in San Francisco. And it's called the Hip Hop Festival. Well, it's the Theater of Fine Arts in San Francisco, and it's the San Francisco Hip Hop, International Hip Hop Festival. Yeah. Yeah. I'm surprised that you don't talk to... Any, well, you don't really 
do Facebook the way like you I you're don't on do, but you don't do uh, it. My Twitter feed goes to Facebook. Right. So I have a presence there but I don't you know the 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 face of Facebook, you know, the way it's laid out, it doesn't appeal to it's me. It's so easy though, Rue, and I have to tell you, I just posted this I don't know, three days ago, I said, I like Facebook better than any social media platform because the people on Facebook tend to be nicer. They tend to be more conversational versus attacking. How many followers do you have? Well, here's the thing. I have my public page, which is verified. Uh I have a Michelle Visage page, and I have my personal married page, which is only friends and family. Very close. Okay, it's not none open. of that. What you said makes any sense to okay. me, but I don't need to know. Okay, I don't need to know. Just trust me. There's a page that goes out like you have. Yeah. Then there's me, there's and then a there's private, and there's one for private. porn. Yeah. Yes, correct. Yeah. So the one that I do privately, th- so many things I go to tag you on. I'm like, why am I tagging him? He's not going to see this. Even that share Uga Uga. Uh-huh. Yeah, I like, love that. Yeah. yeah, it was great. Uh-huh. I wanted to put it on your face, but you don't look at it that way. So uh-huh. I have to find a way to grab that video, uh-huh. send it to you, so yeah, you yeah, see yeah. it because I know that you'll live for yeah, it. Yeah. But I love Facebook. Uh-huh. I love the kindness on Facebook. I love the camaraderie, the rah rah. The people that I'm friends with are on my team. Yeah. The ones on Instagram that follow or on Twitter that follow, I love them too. But there's a lot of them that hate me and are just following me to see what, what? I'm doing. Same with you, girl. They're out there too. Uh-huh. And on Facebook, it seems like there's more of a, a team. Uh. Like we're all in this together type of yeah. mentality. I tend to like it better. Yeah. And I put stuff on there that I like. But I uh, see that for me, Twitter is so much easier because I could do it on my main computer. And I could do I do um, I do tweet deck. So I get this it's a you know, I could do it what? Why I are you can looking at me set like you that? up on a Facebook thing on your main computer. Well, I don't need to because all my tweets go to Twit go to no, Facebook. No, 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 this is more personal. This is like if you want to get but on do it. Do I want to no, get you that probably personal. don't. You probably yeah. knowing you the way that I know you. Yeah. Probably don't. I, I don't. I th- that that's as personal as I could stand. Yes, is I the, know. The Twitter feed. But um I and also with Instagram, I haven't posted anything on Instagram in probably two two weeks. I tag you anyway. I just tag you on all the shit. But I know it's it's that's why people, celebrities, have people that do it for them because it's a fucking full time job. I well, I don't mind it on Twitter. It's it, if Instagram could go onto my main computer, I'd have no problem posting things. They haven't I have that to out. do. I have to do it either on my phone or on my uh, my tablet. Yes, correct. And I, when I can remember to do it, I'll do it. You can get Instagram on your computer. You just can't do all the stuff that you want to do with it on your computer. You could just see the feed. Yeah, no, I could see the feed. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. No, it doesn't. I happen to really. I've been on a new. I I left Facebook for a while, and now I'm back on Team Facebook. But but you were talking about for how preparing. long? What, you you left it for how long? I left it for. I got more into Twitter and to Instagram, and then I started my private page, and I realized I like everybody who's on my private page. Mm. It's not anybody who I don't personally know. Okay. Everybody like when I first started my Facebook, it was like MySpace. I added every motherfucker who wanted to be uh. a friend. I was at my 5,000 limit in a, in a week. Wait, you can have a 5,000? You can only have 5,000 friends on a personal Facebook page. Oh, I didn't know that. That's it. You have a limit. I just went through it and got rid of – this is the way I saw it. If I haven't talked to you in three years yeah. or I don't know how we're connected, mm-hmm. like who's our mutual friend, I don't even know how I know you. Mm-hmm. If I've never met you or we don't talk, why am why do you need to be my friend on Facebook? Mm-hmm. I don't even know you. I don't know you. I don't don't know her. Uh I don't don't know her. her. I don't don't know her. her. So I took everybody off. I went through a frenzy where I took Mm. everybody off. A purge. I just want to be friends. I just want it all to be drag queens. Uh (laughs) And my personal page is just my father, my husband, my family, friends, my kids are on there because that's What's where I'm going to put. Of, oh, right. So you could say, oh, um, I, I had a, a really nice bowel movement today, guys. Yeah, and I took a picture in here of my daughter. Here it is instead of putting her out publicly. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like here's the kids at graduation. I don't want everybody to see. Yeah. So there is a little closed off you know, world. Sure. Of the people that know my kids. And I'm gonna, also, I don't want to bore these people. They don't give mm. a fuck about my kids. Mm. You know, but the people, my Aunt Harriet's on there. She wants to see my pictures. My Aunt of, Harriet. My Aunt Harriet's on there. She wants to see pictures of the kids. Oh, my God. Things like that. Wouldn't it be interesting to find out who was the last person that was co- named Harriet? Probably my aunt. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think the, the or Harriet Tubman. <laughs> Wouldn't that be interesting to know if, like, who was the last person they they named Thelma? Thelma or Beatrice. Uh-huh. Or we talked about this once yeah, before because people yeah. were throwing the names at us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Florence. Or Ernestine, Ernestine, which is my mother's name. Yeah. Oh. yeah. I told you my my grandma was Gertrude. <gasps> wow. 
Gertrude. That's Gertie. A tough one. Oh, Gertie. But they nicknamed her Sally. That's crazy. I know. Sally came. Because you know, um, um, you know, like Lauren Bacall, she was called Betty. That that Lauren, you know, they they have second names, nicknames. Yes, that's called? what I mean. They're nicknames. That, it, it, it wasn't like it's like Lourdes, Madonna's daughter, and she calls her Lola. Right. Like one thing has nothing to do, do with you. Do know you know what um, Margaret's nickname is? Peggy. Yes. Yeah. Why? Do you know what Dolores is? Lola. Oh, it is. Yeah. So like they don't make sense. It's bizarre when you and and speaking of Lauren Bacall, this is a sidebar. I was making dinner the other day. I don't know if you saw my tweet. I'm making dinner in the kitchen. The kitchen and the living room are connected. There's no wall. Mm-hmm. And Lily lays on the couch and she goes, "Why can't I be Lauren Bacall?" Just out of nowhere. I was mm. like, same, Lily, same. Wow. Wow. But yeah, those nicknames, when you name your child, you have to be conscious of what they're going to be called. Yeah. You really do. So like, if my daughter's name's Michelle, are they going to call her Mishy? Are they going to call her, ew, Shelly? Like, yeah. what, you know, you have to think about that. Or Miss Cell. Miss, or Miss Cell uh, uh-huh. You have to think about what you're going to name your kid. Yeah. But I've said this before. Your child at 13 should be able to change their name to what they want it to 13's be. 13's a little early. Uh, but they know who they are at that point. I mean, for their bar mitzvah or their bat mitzvah, that's when they get to say, you know what, mom, dad, uh, I know you called me uh, Mashiba, but, but I want to be called Joe. Yeah. I don't Listen, if my kid wanted to change their name, whatever, I'm not going to be offended. You mm. know, it's, it is what it is, but they they got some cool names yeah um uh, I, Lily and unfortunately Lola are cool i names. can't they are beautiful names unfortunately because they are in the same family i can't tell you tell which one is which actually i do if i think about it hard enough you do but it hurts my my head Your little brain Be- I, you know L- listen about what about your sister no it's all rotten it's rotten we, <laughs> we're all ours and i my brain can't can't process uh, process yeah, that yeah. you know and I, it, it, it trips me up every single time i go yeah rosie renee renetta rosie renee renetta yeah yeah and rupaul and rupaul yeah they call you they used to call me little little ruru oh they used to call me ruru that's adorable that's cute right that's why when we were at disney for our first broadcast Somebody brought you the little, or did I? The little kangaroo is little Roo. Uh huh. Oh, that's so cute. Yeah. And when did we go to Disney? That was 1996. 96. 90. Wow. It had to be 96 because I wasn't married. Oh, I had you weren't. just started dating David. Because oh. didn't Colleen come with me? My friend Colleen. Yes. yes. Yeah. 96. 96. Just started dating David. Wow. I remember talking to him on the phone. Yeah. We were there for a whole week. We were there for a whole week. We were Disney World. We yeah. were broadcasting from Disney World. Every day. We were really good on that morning show. Uh, we certainly were. It was really good. I thought so. Yeah. And they would. And that, that's where we first fell in love. Like yeah, really exactly, fell in love. That's exactly yeah. right. Now, um, because because back then we had longer breaks. We could we could actually talk as our show progressed into ninety eight. Yes. They started making it so that um, we can talk as long. Right. So we started out being able to talk for three to five minutes. Sometimes if we pushed it a seven minute break, but uh-huh. that was rare. Yeah. Because um, that's bordering on talk radio. But that was fine because our yeah. numbers were huge. Yeah. Um, and then as it went on, they were like, oh, this minute has to be, you know, it has to be two minute break yeah. and longer and longer. But y- at that point, you were checking out anyway. I was checking out anyway. You cause... were getting caught up in the rigmarole, rigmarole of the. Uh, corporate the corporate thing yeah. which has always been the part of of this business um not the radio business but just in show business that i think you know what i i'd rather not do I'm this i'm gonna pass i'm gonna pass yeah. on this you yeah. know when it gets to the deck that that's the reason i got in the show business so i would could avoid any type of corporate nine to fiving nine to fiving or any of the um you know the politics that go along with any of that but i think what was refreshing w- about us was not just because you were a gay man and I was your girl. Uh, what? I was what? I'm sorry. I have to tell the world. <coughs> but I think it was because we were so different because we didn't know radio. Uh-huh. We didn't come from the Connecticut School of Broadcasting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We came from the streets. Is there a Connecticut School of Broadcasting? Girl! Huh. Yes! I didn't know it's that. It's actually in Connecticut. <laughs> that much I figured. Yes, <laughs> Exactly. Ah. But I think that's what resonated with people. It's like, oh, they're just regular folk. Yeah. You know, and I think that's what people like. Yeah. Um, it was fun. It, it was, was fun. Yeah. All right. So listen, until next time, my yes, dear. Yes, baby. That was fun. Bye. Bye. Can I get an amen? <laughs> can I get an amen? If you can't love yourself.
How the hell you gonna love somebody else? Can I get a name, man? And don't forget to subscribe name, on man? iTunes. If you can't love yourself, how the hell you gonna love somebody else? Amen. Hey, hey,